Hi, it's Rob. Welcome to another AWS hands-on tutorial where we'll work with Amazon Elastic File System, or EFS. EFS allows you to create and configure shared file systems for AWS Compute Services with no provisioning, deploying, patching, or maintenance required. Amazon EFS also supports cross-region replication for secure data protection. In this video, we'll provision an EFS and mount EC2 web server instances to it, as well as enable cross-region replication. To get started, in the Elastic File System console, I'll click Create File System. I'll give the file system a name, stick with the default VPC, and click Customize. Under Custom Encryption Settings, I'll leave the KMS key field blank and take the default KMS key. Under Performance Settings, I'll stick with General Purpose and under Tags, I'll add a tag for App and a value of Web App. Click Next. And under Mount Targets, I'll just use Availability Zones USD 1A and 1B. Click Next, Next, and create the EFS. Now we see we have successfully created the EFS and the file system state is available. If I go into it, and go to Network, I'll see my mount targets for USD 1A and 1B. Now, what I need to do is jump into the EC2 console, provision an instance, and mount it to this EFS using the mount targets. So, let's jump over to EC2, launch an instance, I'll give it a name of Web Server 1. I'll use an Amazon Linux 2023 AMI, stick with a T2 Micro, create a key pair, and under network settings I'll edit, and I'll put this in the USD 1A subnet, create a new security group. Use the name as a description. And under the inbound security group rules, I'll add a new security group rule for HTTP from anywhere. Now I'll scroll to the bottom, advanced details, and in the user data section, I'll add a script to install the Apache HTTP server. Now I'll go ahead and launch the instance. And now with the instance running, I could connect to it. Elevate my privileges. And check to make sure that Apache was installed. And here we see the HTML directory with no files in it. Now that we have the web server up and running, we could mount to the EFS. And I'll do this by going back to the EFS console and in the Network tab, click Attach. And I'll copy the command for the EFS mount helper all the way out to the slash. Because I don't want to mount to EFS, I want to mount to slash var slash dub 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 slash HTML. So I'll copy this, go back to my EC2 instance, Now, this is the command that I want to execute. However, if I were to do this now, the command would fail for two reasons. First, I need to install the Amazon EFS utils package, and then I need to modify the security group for the EFS to allow NFS access from the web server. So, I'll delete this command. 
and execute the yum install command to install the Amazon EFS utils. Now let's jump back into the EC2 console, select the server, security, open the security group, go to security groups, and here are two security groups. So this is the web server security group we created for the EC2 instance, and the default security group is the security group that was assigned to EFS. So I'll edit the inbound rules, add a rule, NFS from the web server security group and save. Now I could go back to the EC2 instance and mount the EFS. Okay, with the EFS mounted, I'll create an index.html file and put it in the mounted EFS. I'll add a simple h1 element with hello world version 1 and save the file. Jump back in the EC2 console, grab the server's IP, and hit it in a browser. And here we see our web page. So now what I want to do is create another EC2 instance mount the EFS to it and make sure that we could load the same web page using that server's IP. So let's jump back into the EC2 console, launch another instance, this will be web server 2, we'll use the same AMI and instance type, select our key pair, edit the network settings, and we'll put this in USD 1B. Select the existing security group for the web server. Scroll to the bottom. And this time in the user data script, I'll install the Apache server again, but I'll also install the Amazon EFS utils package and perform the mount. So I'll go ahead and launch the instance. And with web server two running, I'll select it, grab the IP, hit that in a browser, and we see our web page as well. So now let's jump back in the EC2, connect to web server two, elevate privileges, and edit the HTML file change version 1 to version 2, save the file, go back to our web pages, refresh on web server 1, we see the update, and web server 2, and we see the update. Okay, so right now we have an EFS in USD 1 with two mount targets, one in USD 1A and one in USD 1B. And we have two EC2 instances, Web Server 1 in USD 1A and Web Server 2 in USD 1B, which are both mounted to the EFS. So what I want to do now is go back to the EFS console, click on Replication, and we see we currently have no replication of this EFS. So I'll click Create Replication, and I'll replicate to a new file system and the destination region will be US East 2. So before I go ahead and click the Create Replication, I'll jump over to the EFS in US East 2, click File Systems, and we see we currently have no file system. So now I'll go ahead and create the replication, and we see the replication is being created, and the replication status is enabling. If I scroll down, we see we have two file system IDs. The first is the source file system, which is the ID for the EFS in USD 1. That has writable permissions. The second is the destination file system in USD 2, which is the replica, which has read-only privileges. So now the replication state is enabled, so let's jump over to USD 2, refresh, and we see our file system. So I'll go ahead and click it, go to replication, 
we see the file system is read only and replication state is enabled. Now back in the EFS in USD to one, if I go to network, we see I have two mount targets in the availability zones with our web servers, which allow me to mount to the EFS instance from the EC2 instances. Now, if I want to do the same thing in USDs2 and create an EC2 instance and mount to this EFS so I could read from it, first, I need to go to the network tab and create a mount target. I'll stick with the default VPC, add a mount target in USDs 2A. Select the subnet and the default security group. And I'll go ahead and save the mount target. Now with the mount target creating, I'll jump into the EC2 console and launch an instance. I'll call this one web server three. I'll use the same AMI and instance type that I used in USD East one, create a key pair. And in network settings, I'll select the USD 2A AZ, create a new security group. and add a security group rule, again for HTTP, from anywhere, scroll down to advanced details, and in the user data section, I'll add the script to install Apache and the Amazon EFS utils, and I'll jump back over to EFS, and with our mount target available, I'll attach, Select the command, paste it in, and mount to slash var www.html. However, before I could launch the instance, I need to go modify the security group for the EFS to allow access from the web server. So I'll jump into security groups. This is our web server security group. Click the default edit the inbound rules and add a rule for NFS from the web server security group and save. Now I can go ahead and launch the instance. And with the web server running, I'll grab the IP, hit that in the browser, and we see our web page. Okay, so let's jump back into EFS. And this is US East 2. If I go to replication, of course we see replication enabled and the replication file system has the source file system in US East 1, which is writable, but the destination file system, which we're mounted to in US East 2 is read only. So if I connect to the EC2 instance in US East 2, elevate my privileges and try to edit the index.html file in EFS, we see I get an error message that the file is unwritable. So let's get out of here, go back to EFS. And in order to make the destination file system in US East 2 writable, I need to delete the replication. So I'll go ahead and do that here. And if we refresh, we'll see that the replication state is deleting. And if we jump over to USD East 1 and go into replication, refresh, we confirm the deletion of the replication here as well. So for now, I'm going to jump back over to USD East 2. And this deletion is going to take a while. So I'm going to go make a pot of coffee. I'm going to drink it. And when I'm done, I'm going to put another pot of coffee on and then come back. 
Okay, with the EFS cross-region replication showing as deleted in USDs 2, and if we jump over to USDs 1 and refresh, we see there's no replication indicated here as well. I'm going to go back to USDs 2, and in the console for the web server, I'm going to edit the index.html file. And this time, since there's no replication, the file is writable. So I'm going to change version 2 to version 3, save the file, go back to the browser, and on the IP address for web server 3 in USDs 2, I'll refresh, and now we see our version 3. But if we go back to the IP for server 1 in USDs 1, we still see version 2, as well as the web server 2 in USDs 1, we see version 2. So I'm going to jump back into the EFS console in USDs 2 and create a replication. This time I'm going to replicate to an existing file system in USDs 1. I'll select our file system and choose it. And now before I could create the replica, I need to disable the overwrite protection on the EFS in USDs 1. So I'll click disable. And under file system protected, I'll change it to disabled, save the changes, and then create the replica. So in USDs 2, replication is enabling. And if we jump over to USDs 1 and refresh, we see replication is enabling as well. Now, the source file system is the file system in USDs 2, and the destination file system is the file system in USDs 1. Now, again, this is going to take a while. So, remember that pot of coffee I made when I deleted the replication? I'm going to go drink that, and when I'm done, I'll come back. All right, I'm back. And replication has been reestablished, this time from USDs 2 to USDs 1. And although it's been significantly more time for me than it has for you, I'm just going to remind us that before I re-enabled replication, in USDs 2, I edited the index.html file and changed the version from version 2 to version 3. So this is web server 3 in USDs 2. If I refresh, we still see version 3. And this is web server 1 in USD East 1. If I refresh, we see version 3 as well as on Web Server 2 in USD East 1. Now for the last test, I'm going to jump back into the EC2 instance on USD East 2, edit the HTML file again, change version 3 to version 4 and save the file, go back to the web page in USD East 2 and refresh, we see version 4, but in USD East 1, if we refresh, we still see version 3. That's because if we jump back over to EFS, although I haven't really been paying attention to the time, it's because that the last sync time was before I just made the edit to the file. So we're going to have to wait for this to sync again before we see the updates in USD East 1. And if we jump over to USD East 1 and refresh, we see the last sync time has changed. So if we jump back into the browser and go to the IP address for Web Server 1 and refresh, we see version 4. And Web Server 2, we see version 4 as well. So that concludes this video on working with Amazon Elastic File System. If you found it useful, feel free to give it a like. And if you'd like to be notified when I add more content to the channel, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.